And it's time for the deep. What are we doing out here? Continue blind reaction to the Elmas Justice proceeding for a turnabout case 2 episode 3 trial. We're finishing this up. I'm probably not going to add any clips because these things take for an eternity and it's kind of hard to make these fun. So, I'll try to emote the best I can. I am kind of curious about the trial, see what's going on. More than likely it's about the whole Sulu and, you know, the little boyfriend turning page. It's probably... I mean, the reading kids were killing her, uh, his dad. Though, I personally think it's just a complete freak accident. So, let's get to it. Figure this out. Three, I do I know what Two little ponies passed no towards around. the castle dome. Did you happen to see who they were? Of the cult, I had no clue, but the filly was Miss Skooloo. There must be hard children to rhyme walking with her. through the forest that night. Because that's all she it ever does. It surely was a curious sight. Two foals traveling solo that night. The forest. It's weird we never get to see human version so of her. We don't get to see. What are they doing alone? More of her kind. They were Just... going to settle the blackmail with yeah. diamond tiara and silver spoon, but I can't bring that up yet. It'll just be rejected outright. These two ponies. Was there anything about them that? Luna was supposed to be about thighs and thou. Scootaloo looked frightened, but that wasn't so strange. The forest scares any pony of any age. The colt was holding something thick, but not with his hooves, but with magic. And what was that? It was a bolt of fabric, rolled. The moonlight showed that it was gold. And that checks out with what's going on yesterday. Magic, you have to connect to carry both it for her just in case. Grab both. This matches what we found at the crime scene, as there was a roll of golden silk left behind in the wagon. It would seem that way. He also carried a weapon, a sword of solid wood. Given where they were going, well, I only want wondering I why no, no one in the background is blinking their eyes. This sword was in one piece. <laughs> Am I right? It's like they're glue and paste there. <laughs> there wasn't a single crack. The sword appeared fully intact. So the defendant's sword really was whole while heading to the sea. I knew it's only and a And it then broke when he used it to attack still. the victim. Hmm. Indeed. That's seeming more and more likely. <sighs> it probably took them a long time it's to so animate clear. their mouths. I need to counter with how the sword really broke. But I'm still missing the evidence to support Turning's version of events. One way or another. I'm going to have to find it soon. Her clothes almost blends Witness, in. Please continue your testimony. For a while I waited, but return they did not. So I chose to at home at an agile trot. Hold it! You just stood on the path and waited? It would not have done to stand and wait, for time has an unchanging gait. Eh? Along the central path nearby, some plants were quite nearly bone dry. These I tended by the light of the moon, expecting the fools to come back soon. How long were you waiting for them? I worked from 9.45 to about 10.10. How do you so know? Hour had Did you have a watch on you? And you just stood there, taking care of plants the whole time? Weren't you worried about two kids going so far into the forest by themselves? Of course I was! Who wouldn't be? After all, they were in the Ever Free. But for all that time there was no sound, nor any sign that they were found. On the path I kept one eye, in case they return or another pass by. I guess no one ever came then? No one did, neither pony nor foal. I finished my work without seeing a soul. So I decided to head home and rest, until I heard something that brought dread to my chest. Huh? But soon I heard a strange far off sound. I ran to where those ponies were bound. Hold it! Uh, noise? It sounded unlike anything. Really of course, you ever can't heard. just yell out like Not that. Not a bear, manticore, wolf, or bird. I could hear it echo around. A strangely loud metallic sound. You mean huh. like. A, a machine? Clank? It was a particular tone to hear. Though clang does suit well with what reached my ear. This again? First a fabric roll and now a clang? Any other similarities to the case from two days ago I should know about? I wonder about? what the clang was. Do you... 
know when you heard this clang. Maybe it was the scooter. As I heard it, I checked the time. It was ten fifteen, right on the dime. And do you know where it came where from? Where is your watch? I know not much to my shame. I could not tell from where it came. I remembered where the children were headed. The sound coming from there was a thought I dreaded. So, what did you do then? I made up my mind to find the foals. Reaching and protecting them were my goals. That plan was briefly sent awry when something weird caught my eye. Hmm. On my way, a small shadow my eyes did track, but it jumped away before I could react. Maybe it's Diamond Tiara or a Solar small Spoon. Shadow? I wish I could describe it more than just weird, but it left as soon as it had appeared. Still, it was rather odd to me, so I included it with my testimony. Do you know when and where you saw this shadow? Five minutes after would be the when. So I'd wager it was 1020 then. Where is difficult, I must confess. When those are in, when people are in this type of situation, they do not check the time. Here, witness. Point it out on this diagram. You have my thanks, Princess Luna. Now let me fill this lacuna. Do you have the rhyme? Yes, <laughs> it was this spot right here. Or at least someplace near. So just on the path? I thought we were on the path towards collision, but then it jumped out of my line of vision. For those unaware, the Everfree Forest is notorious for being absolutely pitch black at night. The intense tree cover prevents most forms of light from reaching the forest floor. True. I mean, I lived in Washington State, those are the thick trees there. Moon, so some light was able to illuminate the areas that lacked direct cover from trees. Unfortunately, the rest of the forest remained as pitch black as one would expect it to be. I thought we have a convention there, ever free northwest. Mm -hmm. at all. Shape? Size? Anything? Even in darkness, there was one distinct feature. At the very least, it yeah. seemed like a small creature. Yeah, it looks like a pony. Like... a child? That's what I thought after what I'd seen. I looked for them, seeing only the forest green. I tried calling out, hoping they would return. But if they had responded, I could not discern. Perhaps they cared not to heed me well. Or perhaps my voice drowned under the howling swell. Maybe they heard you and ran away. Howling? Yes, and quite loudly. For one main reason, tis now the timber wolves' hunting season. Whenever oh, they yeah, the wolves the made of pure timber. They raised their canine I'm heads ready. and howl. On that night, they were easily heard. And they kept going undeterred. When they stopped, I do not know. By then I knew it was time to go. What right. do you think made them howl? Who is to say? Certainly not me. Into a timber wolf's mind I cannot see. Most wolves actually howl to communicate. Season, but Some think it's because of the moon, but it no, it's just that's how they communicate. Let's focus on what we can answer then, shall we? Witness? What did you see once you arrived at the scene? Upon arrival, what met my gaze I'll not forget for all my days. A pony's body, still with blood around his head, turning earth to mud! Hold it! But it wasn't blood. It was a cape, right? I'll admit my interpretation was flawed, but if you don't have a problem, don't needlessly prod. You didn't check to make sure? When I came upon the former guard of the law, his stillness shocked me. Not a breath did he draw. Creeping closer to his still build, I hoped Creepy. my fears would be dashed by thrills. But my suspicions proved correct, as I realized when I checked his neck. No pulse of life giving blood I found. He was as dead as winter's ground. And... What did you do after that? That gruesome discovery sent me reeling and gave me a terrible, sickening feeling. The I've seen worse, trust me, I've seen way head, worse. I glanced about, filled with dread. There were still the children I needed to find, and their fates were plaguing my mind. Thankfully, as I looked around, no other bodies could be found. Merely a scooter and a wagon lay amidst the frightening horde display. 
There was no one nearby? Perhaps that shadow of which I caught sight was one of the children in mid-flight. The other could have simply hid while farewell to that scene I bid. But that's just one thought in my mind, since no other figures I did find. How much info? You sure? There was nobody there at all, maybe... Well, the chips are not, would obviously run from that. They're something? not scary Objection! Continuing to press the issue won't yield a different answer, Defense. I suggest you move on before you waste all of our time. Well, excuse me, Princess. Well, she is doing two Come shifts. Double checking now is there. Witness, I'll be crappy as hell if I was her too. After you found the body. Once I was sure that he was dead, to the police I quickly fled. Hold it! Did you happen to run into anyone on your way there? While leaving the forest, I saw not a soul. It was, ironically, a more pleasant stroll. I see. And how long did it take you to get to the police station? I'm not sure. I didn't even know Pueyville had a police station. Amidst the thoughts of the crime. Or a lot for that matter. Let's it out then, shall we? Witness, you claim to have left your house at 10.15. Is that correct? Yes, it is exactly as you claim. I left right as the odd noise came. From there, you headed to the scene of the crime, which we have confirmed was a roughly 15-minute walk. This means you arrived around 10.30. Next, you examined the scene. How long would you say you stayed there? Well, it doesn't feel right to make a guess. I'd say five minutes, more or less. So you left at 10.35. The walk out of the ruins and then back through the forest is approximately 35 That would be a terrible minutes. Get, The police station uh, itself is another 10 minutes away from the <laughs> I'm forest. I'm bad with time. This puts the witness arriving there around 11.20 that night. Those are some very nice calculations, Prosecutor Luna. She literally has nothing oh, else to do. Don't be that impressed. The best is yet to come, Your Honor. I have here a report from that very station. It confirms that this witness notified the police of a body around that time. Why is everybody freaking out? Order! Great. Instead of casting doubt on her testimony, I just made it even more reliable. Come on. Oh, this is just oh, There's not a single contradiction. What am I supposed to do? Enough! I believe we have reached the end of this cross-examination. Agreed, Your Honor. Hmm. I don't think our Golden Pixie can take much more. Best we put her out of her misery now. What about Why you, is your problem, Luda? Are you finished with this testimony? Are you right by her? As far as the court can see, is she prettier than there are you? no contradictions contained within it. As things stand, we will have to trust in what the witness has told us. If you have a rebuttal, Miss Sykes, now would be the time to give it. Uh, yes. Yeah, I'd be at a loss too. Right on it with a whole lot of nothing I can even say. Twilight, do you have any ideas? Um, well, just one, but... Great. What is it? I, I don't think it's a good idea, though. Well, just... Tell it to me anyway. We can decide together. I don't think we have the time for that, Athena. Let's just keep following the flow of the trial. Maybe something else will come up later that we can attack. No, we can't yeah, just let this really... slide. This she testimony needs anything is too this damaging. We have to strike now. I understand that, Athena. I do. But right now, I don't think there's anything more we can do. But we can't just give up, Twilight. You said you'd try and help me in any way you could. If you have an idea, yeah, how you to should be the one doing this trial, not her problem, anyway. You have to tell me, otherwise we'll lose. I, I know that, but I can't let you do this. I've seen it happen before, and it's not worth it. There, there has to be another way. There is no other way. We need to do something right now. We can't let Scootaloo or Turning Page down. I'm not saying we should give up. I'm just saying that unless you two are interested in sharing with the court what you are squabbling about. I believe it is time we moved on. No! I can't let this happen. If I let this testimony stand, I'll never be able to recover from it. Very well. Witness, thank you for your time. You may- Objection! Wait! 
Hold on. There's... There's something about the witness's testimony that I find strange. Oh, oh really? Really no. Yeah, try to Please, guess uh, or tell. something. Tina, stop! Sorry, Twilight, but I can't just sit and wait for an opportunity to show itself. I have to knock this testimony down now. This better not be a bluff, Miss Sykes. Uh, it's not like you're getting uh, paid to do this, you Your Honor, it totally is. Shut up, Widget. Talking to yourself, are we? Uh, don't let them distract you, Athena. If Twilight doesn't want to help me, then I'll just have to figure this out by myself. But there aren't any contradictions or flaws. What now? What would Mr. Wright do here? He'd turn his thinking around. Think this is a good, of the box. good point, I guess. can't cast doubt on the testimony you can't exactly. save out the other little ones because she only what saw the one shadow, so... cast doubt on the one testifying? Is there a way to do that? Miss Sykes! I've had enough of you wasting this court's time! Present your rebuttal, or let us move on! I yes, your honor. She knows. <laughs> Here goes nothing. So, uh, actually, um, the previous testimony didn't have any noticeable contradictions in it. What? Uh, but I... Is that not what we've been saying this whole time? E yes, but, um, well, what if we think about this another way? Another way? Athena. According to the testimony, Zakora saw Scootaloo and Turning Page headed towards the crime scene. She heard a noise and headed there herself. And she doesn't even know where they went. Away, she came across the two running away from the scene, and oh, shortly afterwards, she arrived on the site. And right there, she found the dead body of one royal order. I see no point in us repeating all of this. Well, maybe she think about, about the body or something? As we established earlier, the victim suffered both a blow to the side and a stab to the head. What's more, we know for a fact that after the victim was knocked to the ground, he managed to get back up again. Quite so. Our current theory is that Turning Page was the one who hit him, using his sword. However, if he was killed right at that moment, the stab wound would be on the opposite side of his head. Therefore, he must have had an opportunity to stand upright before being stabbed and falling over again. But if she got there early, how was she to out fall? earlier, Scootaloo could not have been the one to inflict the fatal wound. She can't fly, so she wouldn't have been able to stab Royal Order in the head after he stood up. Which leads us to the conclusion that it must have been turning page. He used his magic to stab the victim with the scooter. I don't think he's that strong. There wasn't anyone else on the scene who could have done it, after all. This is it. Now's my chance. I may not personally believe what I'm about to say, but I don't have a choice now. My hand's been forced. But there was someone on the scene, actually. After Scootaloo and Turning Page fled, someone else arrived. And had the perfect opportunity to murder the victim. Athena, uh, please. You're gonna end up blaming right. another kid? You aren't saying. Defense? Let's assume that Turning Page really did hit his father, and he fell to the ground. Now, at that point, who's to say Scootaloo and Turning didn't flee right then, without killing him? Then that would mean the one who showed up on the scene after they left would have. You can't blame Zakora. You can't blame her. Come on. Don't do it. It's entirely possible that our witness, Miss Zakora, is Royal Order's true killer. What? You idiot. You idiot. Uh. Order! Order in the court! Miss Sykes! Are you saying that her whole testimony was one giant lie made to cover up her crime? Not necessarily everything. She's just using her just to find out the real truth. Trying to have stumbled yeah, across is... the dead body. Uh, the defense uh, believes uh, that instead of finding Royal Order dead, Zakora came across him as he was getting up. She then took the scooter that was left on the scene and she stabbed has him no in the reason. head. Afterwards, she reported the body to the police, claiming he was already dead when the she found him. I guarantee you, she's but innocent. Because that is a ridiculous. 
ridiculous accusation! Yeah. What could possibly be my motivation? Turning and Scootaloo don't have motives either. Is it really that much of a stretch to suspect you as well? Your Honor, I may not have any Good evidence point. to back up this claim, but you can't deny it is a possibility. As such, we shouldn't take stock in any of this witness's testimony. It's true, the yellow attorney brings up a good point. Would the Cora really do that, though? Do no, I, she would not. Hey, if she's right, that means those two kids are innocent. That was loud. You naive child! T child but Well, she is a thousand years old. Please, there will be no insults in my courtroom. For one who knows not the weight of her words, I can't think of a better comparison. Hey! What gives? I was just... You intend to cast doubt on Get the in shot. order to save your own clients. Yet, to do so, you accuse her of committing the crime herself. Well, what else was I supposed to do? That testimony was not at all conclusive. Uh, huh? The witness never saw who the killer was. She didn't even clearly see who was running away from the scene. But, but that's what you and your honor were assuming. And it's your job to point out why that assumption is flawed. You didn't give her much and info. And demand further evidence and testimony for the prosecution to support their case. But instead of doing that, you have openly accused this witness. You have dirtied not just her name, but if you're wrong, yours as well. But Pony, you're blaming two and kids. You, Ponies uh, of who's the really gallery. guilty? You who would be so quick to suspect this poor creature on nothing but a baseless theory. Shame on you all! Is this the kind of harmony Equestria seeks to share with the world? Order! Order! That's enough, Prosecutor Luna! Make one more disparaging remark towards Miss Sykes or the gallery, and I'll have you held in contempt of court! How? She's a present. My apologies, Your Honor. S say what you want, Prosecutor Luna, but my theory doesn't contradict any of the evidence or testimony presented in this trial. As long as that remains true, I'm free to continue asserting it. <sighs> Very well. If that's the path you choose, so be it. I wonder if your co-counsel feels the same way, though. Well, it's probably going to be really pissed with you. I'm sorry, Twilight, but it's too late for me to back down. Nevertheless, you shan't be relying on that theory for much longer. If I can't convince you to simply abandon it, then I'll just force you to go against it. Uh, also, you're not really allowed to slam mean? the tables. Uh-oh. I don't like the sound of this. You mentioned motive a minute ago, did you not? The motive that Scootaloo and Turning Page lack? Yeah. It's about time we discussed that, don't you think? So bring out that letter you received yesterday. Uh, letter? The blackmail letter. I know you have it. Show it to the court. Now. Darn it. What does she know about the blackmail? I kind of forgot about that. Scootaloo or Turning tell her? Defense? What's this about a blackmail letter? I your Honor, um, it's this right here. Scootaloo and her friends, the Cutie Mark Crusaders, received it yesterday afternoon. Their scooter, wagon, and capes were all stolen by some pony. To get them back, they yeah, had to bring the blackmailer a roll of gold and silk. Hmm. That's stolen. Those items all sound familiar. They should. Your Honor, all of these items were accounted for at the crime scene. You're right, but why would that be? Read the letter yourself, and I'm sure you'll figure it out. Oh, the location of the blackmail. It's the same place where the murder occurred. Precisely, it was Your Honor. Like I said, an accident, now, not a murder. finally know why the defendants were in the forest in the first place. They went to settle this deal with their blackmailer. I see. And I guess this would mean Turning Page is a member of these cutie mock crusaders? No, he is not. Not exactly, Your Honor. The two had met for the first time earlier that day. 
They became quick friends over the course of an afternoon. She talked to but them. But then, why did Mr. Page get involved with the Blinded. blackmail? During her interrogation, the defendant, Sudaloo, mentioned that she was backed into a corner when her friends decided against following the orders they were given. She decided, instead, to ask her newfound friend, Turning Page, to help her retrieve what had been taken. The two conspired to break into, and steal from, Carousel Boutique, in order to acquire the golden silk the blackmailer Carousel. asked for. Oh, These that's two a, okay. kids broke into a store? Did they just uh, say they did? This doesn't look good. After acquiring the fabric, oh, wait, no, they, they, they were proceeded talking to enter the forest okay. and made their way to the scene where the blackmailer was waiting. And this blackmailer, who were they? Dami Kira. I can answer that, Your Honor. The defense believes they were two fillies named Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon? Yeah, very interesting. An infamous interesting pair of bullies <laughs> whom the Crusaders are unfortunately well acquainted with. They constantly harass the group for not having their cutie marks yet, calling them names like Blank Flanks. They still have their cutie marks yet? How awful! Let me speak with them! There'll be no bullying on my watch! <laughs> That little bullying is super normal. Don't watch me get insulted, though. There's more, Your Honor. You see, yesterday when we spoke to Scootaloo at the detention Nowadays, center, everybody complains about we every learned stupid that little an altercation between the Crusaders and these bullies occurred on the day of the murder. During that exchange, Turning Page came to their aid and chased the bullies off. This was where Scootaloo and Turning Page first met, and later, spent time getting to know each other. And I assume this is somehow related to the blackmail letter? Precisely. Uh, the the going two like, fellies were that angry that their me? encounter with the Crusaders ended with them getting told off. So they blackmailed them in retaliation. If you look at the top of the letter, you'll see that it begins with, Hey there, Blank Flinks! The only ponies who would address the Crusaders as such are these bullies. This serves as definitive proof that the ponies who wrote the blackmail letter are none other than Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. OBJECTION! Unfortunately, Defense, that is not a wholly concrete possibility. Huh? huh? But... The, the insult... Could easily be a red herring by the author of the note. These fillies are not the only ones who are aware of that particular taunt. After all, if these fillies are as infamous as you say they are, then any pony familiar with them would know that they are fond of the term blank flank. No, they're not. It's they hate that word. proof, defense. Suppose your honor began to refer to you as Golden Pixie. Would that make him me? Well, would it Golden Pixie? I very much would not mind being considered a princess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not answer that, your honor. But now, let us turn our attention to the letter itself. I'm sure everyone can see that this note is written entirely in letters cut out from a magazine. As yep. a result, it is impossible to perform any sort of writing analysis. However, That's like an old that doesn't Photoshop. mean we can't prove who I the author of Photoshop this note is. Well. Uh, how? If we could uh, find the magazines that these learned. letters were cut out from, it'd be a simple matter of matching the cuts on the letters to the holes in the magazine. You're gonna regret not fully yeah, going through a computer class. I don't have the type of all my fingers, but that's about it. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Are those? I have here two magazines with several letters cut out from many different pages. If the court would be so kind, I'd Does like to request some time eye. for the police <laughs> to analyze the letters on the note and the empty spaces in the magazines. If we get a match, then we'll know for a fact that the blackmail letter was written using these magazines. Very well. The court grants the prosecution's request. Private Eye? Yes, my lord. Please take this letter and these magazines and have an analysis performed. Try to have it done in 30 minutes if you can. Good luck. Certainly, my lord. Alright, the entire time that Zakura's gonna be just glaring at. Have the results uh, come in, uh, her, uh, it's like the whole time. They were just <laughs> delivered, your honor. And what's the conclusion? The letters on the blackmail note match the shape of the cuts in the magazines. Okay, what does that I mean? see. 
so it has been proven how the blackmail letter was written. But I fail to see how this helps us, Prosecutor. Same here. Rest assured, Your Honor. We did not simply pick those magazines up off the street or find them in a dumpster. You must have found them at neither Diamond or Silver's house, right? The magazines that were used to write the blackmail letter were found in the home of Royal Order. What? Crap. What? Well, yeah, crap. Triple crap. Order in the court! Prosecutor Luna, are you saying that the one behind the blackmail was the victim himself? At the site of the blackmail, Why would the it was his was body still that remained stuff. after Scootaloo and Turning Page fled the scene. Was he trying to Additionally, do like a... the magazines used to Southern write the blackmail letter were found in his home. It certainly doesn't look good for him. There's a lot of questions. Remember the now father like the whole pranks on there. Yeah, come on, that's kind of a I dick can't move. believe it. I won't believe it. But, if you think about it, it does it, seem It really doesn't on. seem like it, no, it Objection! Work. Prosecutor Luna, you can't seriously be suggesting that Royal Order is the blackmailer. It doesn't make any sense! What do you mean by that, Princess Twilight? Well, Royal Order was in Kikula well, on the eve of the murder. Yeah. He would not have been able to steal the Crusader's belongings, nor send them the blackmail letter. Those events transpired much Unless earlier it was a mom, in the day. I don't think mom would Unless do that. the prosecution can explain how he absconded with the Crusaders things while in Canterlot, it's impossible for him to be the blackmailer. Is that so? Well then, Prosecutor Luna, what do you say to that? The defense is, of course, correct, Your Honor. Given the fact he if was in Canterlot did, maybe when the occurred, doing a, she's Royal doing Order could not be the blackmailer. Of course, she got However, her husband being like I don't forever. recall ever asserting that he was. Miss uh -huh. Sparkle merely assumed that would be my argument, and has seemingly overlooked the fatal implication this evidence actually holds. How come the prosecutor side what? is always super confident Royal Order was not around to set up this whole blackmailing scheme, yet the fact remains that these magazines were discovered in his home. This can only mean that the perpetrator of this blackmailing must be some pony else who lives there. We know for a fact it can't be turning, given that he went with Scootaloo into the forest to settle the deal. That leaves us with only one other possibility. The mom. It, you don't mean... The perpetrator can only be the victim's wife, Miss Fair Devotion. What? Yeah, I figured they were gonna bring her up. Now she's gonna have this order! Spot. Order in the court! Yeah, quit Luna, around. are you sure? That's the defendant's own mother! I am, Your Honor, as much as it pains me to say. But remember, Turning Page was not the target of the blackmail. The Crusaders, and by extension, Scootaloo, were. Turning simply accompanied her into the forest. In which case, it's not so unthinkable that his mother could very well have been behind the whole thing. Objection! <laughs> this is ridiculous. Maybe she was just, like I said, Why probably just called a prank or something. The One, Crusaders. Just because for fun. she needed to. She needed to? You explained it to us earlier, Defense, did you not? Huh? Turning Page confronted two bullies earlier that day. Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. He intervened whilst they were harassing the Crusaders. However, you left out the most important detail. Okay. What detail? That Turning's attack resulted in the Phillies' dresses getting ruined. <sighs> now tell me, Golden Pixie, what do you suppose happened afterwards? They probably went through the mall. Uh, afterwards? And get, and told There's them. plenty more to this story than what has been told. Luckily, thanks to our interrogation of Miss Devotion, As usual, we were able to shed light on this matter. Like, <laughs> Please explain, <laughs> prosecutor. According to Fair Devotion, Diamond Tiara's mother, Spoiled Rich, or met spoiled with her bit. later that day, I mean, yeah, after hearing yeah. about the incident from her daughter. Those dresses turning page dirty were custom-made and quite expensive. So, of course, Mrs. Rich was rather upset to hear about what had happened to them. Uh, Seeing as how the fault lay with her son, 
Spoil demanded that Miss Devotion pay back the money in compensation. And she agreed to that. <laughs> Why? Once again, out of necessity. Mrs. Rich happens to be the president of the Ponyville School Board. Miss Devotion feared that she if she didn't agree, Mrs. Rich would ensure really that she would never work at the school again. Job it's horrible. But now I'm sure you can see why Miss Devotion would need to get her hooves on a great deal of money quickly. But the blackmail letter didn't ask for money. It asked for the fabric. Indeed it did. Maybe now, the fabric why, is worth Miss something? Sparkle, would that be the case? Why? Well, because... Like I said, it takes a long time to make and it costs a lot of money. You mean bits? The fabric would fetch a pretty high price if sold to the right pony? Exactly. The value Ooh, of that gold and silk was brought up during the fight between the kids. Turning must have overheard what was said and recounted the details to his mother when she confronted him. Hmm. And that, fillies and gentle colts, is precisely what gave Miss Devotion the idea to blackmail the Cutie Mark Crusaders. She did it in order to pay off spoiled rich. <laughs> That actually would make sense. First, there's a chorus like, What is even happening right now? You know, apologize for Luna somehow me? opened up the possibility uh, that Fair Devotion wrote the blackmail letter. Alright, grateful. You presented a very <laughs> convincing <laughs> argument, Prosecutor. But there's still one thing that troubles me. And what would that be, Your Honor? Earlier, you said that you think Royal Order is somehow involved in the blackmail. But it's been proven that he wasn't around to steal the Cutie Mark Crusader's effects or send the letter. So, how can that be? There's no big mystery Maybe here, the Your Honor. Is. It's easy to imagine that Miss Devotion and her husband were working together. Working ah. together? But I thought Mr. Order had gone into that forest to look for his son. So Miss Devotion claims. But the prosecution sees no reason to trust her word anymore. The instant these magazines were matched with this blackmail letter, all of her testimony became highly so you suspect. Get the truth, huh? hmm. You're quite right. The magazines leave little room for doubt in regards to who the blackmailer was. Which means they or also cast doubt on her explanation for Mr. Order's movements. Taking that into account, we must seek another explanation for why he went into the forest. Luckily, there is a rather simple one. Perhaps, as soon as Mr. Order got home, Miss Devotion explained the whole situation to him. Armed with the knowledge of the blackmailing and the fabric roll, he would have left immediately for the castle. That would be the I just real don't want to go like to the next Order video. The forest that night. I guess no, like, he intended to act as the recipient for the blackmail. And thus, we arrive at the heart of the matter, like the so motive <laughs> for the murder. I don't think Why we could ever nervous? truly know what happened at the foot of the bridge that night. Somewhere. However, if Mr. Order was the recipient for the exchange, then we can make a few truth, a It could be as simple as the negotiations going sour, or... It could be that learning what his father was doing infuriated turning to the point of attacking him. Whichever scenario you choose, the basic facts remain the same. Royal Order was present you, at the scene of the blackmail. If you found out his parents was doing it, he probably won't try to kill him. He'll probably the just, only ones like, who could have done it are the only two who were at like, the scene at the time. You jerk! You blue <laughs> and Bird. Like, oh, you're getting spanked now. <laughs> However, as the defense has previously demonstrated, It'd be rather difficult for Scootaloo to be involved in this crime. Yeah, these parents can't Given her inability to fly and the no, fact that the victim like, was ah, killed while standing. <laughs> Therefore, the prosecution is willing to cut the defense put the a deal here. What is it? Concede that Turning Page is guilty of murdering his father, and will be willing to let Scootaloo off without a single charge. The Ooh, choice that's... is yours, Golden Pixie. You need more info before I... you make a decision. Is that was my phone. It's probably my job, Z. Your Honor? No! 
defend me if you must. Ah, crap, he's gonna but take the fall. just know that if I think things start to look bad, I won't hesitate to confess if it means saving her. Crap. Crap, crap, He's going crap, to crap, confess. Crap, crap. I have to stop him. Objection! Turning, don't do this! We don't have to give up yet! Thank you for fighting so hard for us, Miss Sykes. But... Yeah. This is honestly for the best. Don't do it. Don't. Someone stop him. No. Oh. Put your hand out of his mouth. I, I promised you both. I'd save the two of you together. But there's no way you can do that now. Can you? And besides, this is... Just tell me one thing, Turning. Who was it that you met at the bridge? Was it really your father? No. So I was right then. It was Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. Well, yes, it was. But that's... Ha! See, Luna? The defendant just disproved your whole theory. Objection! Yes, congratulations, my dear Golden Pixie. Kids you can now secrets. add perjury to the defendant's list of charges. Objection! Not if he's telling the truth, Prosecutor Luna. In that case, defense, let's clear this matter up once and for all, shall we? If he's hey, willing to talk. But I... Shh! It's all right, Turning Page. Don't forget what I told you before this all started. You and Scootaloo have nothing to worry about. I promise. Surely, then why the hell are you about to promise him? you the same? Is she? Yes, she's trying to help them. Of course! That explains all those hints from before. And why she got so mad when I accused Sakura, too. Yeah, she's gonna need a huge apology for that There's one. There's no way I can do this by myself. She wants to help, and I need it. <sighs> Accidenti! I'm never gonna get any better if I keep getting bailed out like this! But I need to do something! Why you try a different job? Just saying. Just this once, okay? Just this once. E yes, Prosecutor Luna. <clears throat> I can indeed. Glad to see we're on the same we're page. We're somewhere, I guess. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Miss Sykes. Thank you, Turning. Um, I'm not quite sure I understand what just happened. Join the club. Then allow me to summarize for you, Your Honor. The prosecution well, claims that, that the orchestrator of the blackmailing deal was Fair Devotion. We claim this because of the magazines found in her home. These, as previously proven, were used to create the blackmail letter. We also claim that Miss Devotion sent her husband, Royal Order, to the scene for the exchange. He was subsequently killed by one or both of the ponies who arrived to settle the deal, Scootaloo and Turning Page. Meanwhile, the defense claims that the orchestrators of the blackmail were two fillies the Cutie Mark Crusaders had encountered earlier in the day. Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. Like I said, it's probably Their an main accidental bit. This is what Turning has just said that the ponies he and Scootaloo met at the bridge that night were, in fact, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. Defense, I hardly need to explain to you that testimony from the defendant is not entirely reliable, do I? Not at all, Prosecutor Luna. But any info helps. Then, by all means, do prove it to us. Prove that the one the defendants met at the crime scene was not royal order, but instead, those two fillies. If I'm right that she's helping, then I have to believe that Shouldn't the evidence I need has already been shown. The kid, he was there, so... All of the evidence relating to the black male seems to point lying, directly at his devotion. Not... In that case, instead of trying to prove who the blackmailer was, I should focus on figuring out everyone's movements that night. If I can show that Royal Order's actions contradict the blackmailers, it should be enough to bring those two fillies to the stand. Prosecutor Luna, I have a question for you. How do you think the victim made it to the scene of the blackmail? Ah, now we're asking the real questions. The prosecution is under the assumption that the victim would have wanted to get there as quickly as possible. Thus, he likely would have teleported as far as we know he could go. 
the crossroads, and simply walked the rest of the way. Simple, no? Objection! Unfortunately, Prosecutor Luna, that's not possible. Why not, Defense? Maybe. Turning, Scootaloo? Yes, Miss Sykes? Remind me once again at what time the two of you entered the forest. Um, it was around 9.25, I'm pretty sure. But uh, what time? Uh, was it we summertime or what? The there's a big daylight Did you difference. ever come across anyone? No. I don't think so. Prosecutor Luna, can you remind the court what time the victim left his house? As we heard from Detective I's testimony, it was 9.30. And do you so know it's hard how to tell long it takes night. to reach the crossroads from the forest entrance? About five minutes. Precisely. And that clears it all up then, doesn't it? Um, I'm afraid I'm not following. The only the teleport as far as they can see. The order teleported himself to the crossroads as soon as he left his house. In other words, at 9.30. Additionally, we've just confirmed that Turning and Scootaloo entered the forest at 9.25. After a five minute walk, so he probably just ran in like that, like out of hell. At 9.30. Oh! In conclusion, the victim couldn't have teleported to the crossroads immediately after leaving his house. Because if he did, he would have appeared right in front of the defendants. Unless he saw them and teleported Very to the side. Very impressive, Golden Pixie. You went the proven that Royal went Order around couldn't have been walking ahead of the defendants. Then he would have gotten into those but followers. what's preventing him from having followed behind them? It might yeah. mean he was a little late to the meeting, but that alone doesn't make it an impossibility. Unless... You have proof to the contrary, Defense? I know they're talking about you? how they stole that fabric, but why is, is Rarity not pissed off about this? You look like you've come to a terrible realization. He's right. I have. And you just stood there, taking care of plants the whole time? Weren't you worried about two kids going so far into the forest by themselves? Of course I was. Who wouldn't be? After all, they were in the Ever Free. But for all that time there was no sound, nor any sign that they were found. On the path I kept one eye, in case they were turned or another passed by. I guess no one ever came then? Unless he went around, like I said. Pony nor fall. I finished my work without seeing a soul. And he can't tell for her or she would have seen the blink. The contradiction is obvious, but unless I retract my earlier accusation, it won't be credible. Defense, what have you hit upon? So, this is what Luna meant when she said she'd force me to abandon that theory. Yep. The only reason I made it was to remove that damaging testimony from the court's consideration. Yeah, you're gonna have to do, do a lot of kissing it. No. To bite me. This must have been what Twilight wanted to warn me about. She knew this could happen. Well, Golden Pixie? Don't keep Why me can't waiting. Why you just call her by her name? I... Once again... I don't think I have much choice. No. That's not right. Not again. This isn't like before. When I could have let it go. This time, I really have no choice. I have to do this. And Luna knows it. Yeah, she needs to apologize. If it's she be is hard. not for blood, then letting Sakura's testimony stand shouldn't be much of a problem, regardless of how much it hurts our case. At this point, that's what I have to believe. Your Honor. Yes, Miss Sykes? Before the defense makes its next argument, we would like to retract our accusation of Miss Sakura. Yeah. D defense! Did I hear that right? You wish to retract your accusation? E yes, Your Honor. Yeah. I'll have you know, Miss Sykes, that I don't take kindly to fruitless accusations. 
I'm afraid I'll have to hold you in contempt of court as punishment. Contempt? Huh? Objection! The prosecution objects to the defense being held in contempt. Y you do? We can see that our oh, opponent is merely a fledgling attorney, still trying to find her footing. Such inexperience can easily lead to impulsive decisions. Prosecutor Luna... Even so, in this line of work, such actions cannot be overlooked, Prosecutor Luna. They could easily lead to the destruction of an innocent life. As such, I feel punishment is necessary here. I can punish her afterwards. I understand, Your Honor. In that case, why don't we leave that decision up to the one whose life was targeted? If she wishes for the defense to be punished, then the prosecution will stand down. Very well. Witness, what do you say? Something right. It's all right, Miss Sakura. You don't have to say anything. If you want to see me get punished, I won't blame you. What I did was rash and dumb. I'm just... This is which Holly should have been the one doing this. Twilight here tried to stop me, but... I didn't listen to her. As a result, I put you in danger. Even though I knew I had no real reason to suspect you of anything. Especially when a certain filly made me aware you'd never murder any pony. Oh, well, we don't technically know her past. So... I can't expect you to forgive me, but... I just wanted the chance to say... I'm sorry. That's a true apology. Not just saying I'm sorry. <laughs> I understand what you meant to do. Saving both turning and school Lou. While your accusation has hurt my pride, I, for one, will take it in stride. You and I desire the same, you see. To see those two young defendants set free. You evidently still have much to learn, but punishment from me you have not earned. Oh. I would never <laughs> want to be the Thank you, Sakura. type of person who accused me of that I'm like the wrong person. The court acknowledges my the witness's memory. decision. The defense shall not be held in contempt. However, Miss Sykes, I better not see any more rash accusations come from you again. Don't you mean he? If I do, you will be penalized and held in contempt, regardless <laughs> of what the prosecution <laughs> or witnesses <laughs> may say. Understood, Your Honor. I'm glad we've cleared up that matter. So now let's return I to like the topic at hoof. The prosecution still believes noticed. that Royal Order was the recipient for the blackmail exchange. The defense has proven, however, that he could not have arrived at the scene prior to the defendants. Because Our probably amended went around. theory is that he followed behind the children as they made their way through the forest. But that's what Cora defense, would have saw do you have any that, objections yeah, to no. this interpretation? I do. Then, by all means, state them here and now. It all relies on Zakora's witness testimony. If you recall, she claimed to have kept an eye on the forest path ever since she saw Turning in Scootaloo Pass. She continued watching until 10:10, when she finally retired for the Again, evening. most people never looked During that at their entire clocks. time, she didn't see any pony following behind the defendants. That means the victim couldn't have passed by during that time frame. OBJECTION! Need I suggest the obvious? Mr. Order could have easily waited until Zakora had stopped watching the path before continuing onwards. Or Wouldn't better that take yet, too long? he could have simply walked off the path and yeah. through the woods himself using an illumination spell. OBJECTION! How come we, that the fans, never either. got to see any There's other no magic besides teleporting and leave. shooting lasers? Come on. Even if, for whatever okay, reason, there was other spells, but he did wait. It takes about 15 minutes to reach the scene from Zakora's hut anyway. He'd be arriving at the castle no later than 10.25. But we know, Turning and Scootaloo had likely left the castle by that time. Zakora spotted one of them in the form of a small shadow at 10.20. There would have been no chance for negotiations to even occur. Let alone turn sour. Such and a the chance room. of using an illumination spell? 
highly unlikely. The Everfree Forest is pitch black at night. Under the cover of trees, you need a very strong source of light to find your way through. A light that strong in a place that dark would no doubt have caught Sakura's attention, no matter where it came from. So he just ran in blind? There's no way I would have missed a light, and I did not see one at all that night. Which leads us to only one conclusion. Royal Order could not have followed behind the defendants, nor made it to the scene ahead of them. <laughs> Thus, Royal Order you don't need to could not have been table. involved in the blackmail. Did she fall asleep? Did everybody fall asleep? I feel like they need to gather more intel before they do this case. Again. Probably and wait with for. that, <laughs> any motive for murder has completely disappeared. Probably Indeed. not. Indeed. It would seem as if the prosecution's proposal no longer holds water. What say you in response, Prosecutor Luna? Simply this, Your Honor. Bravo, Miss Sykes. That was a fantastic rebuttal. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, thanks? I could say the same thing to you, given how much you helped. I think I'm all saying to me, girls, always have freaking long hair. Golden Pixie. Oh, boy. Back to the nickname already. Your assertions are solid and well-founded, but unfortunately, they are far from impregnable. Uh, what do you mean? Your claims hold strong only so long as the two assumptions they're based on are true. What assumptions? The first is the small shadow Miss Sakura saw. We can't know for certain it was related to these kids. If it's not, then we have no way of knowing exactly when they left the scene. In that instance, it would be more than possible for Royal Order to arrive late at the scene and still meet the defendants there. <sighs> well? Why don't we ask them now? OBJECTION! Any testimony they could offer on this matter would be heavily influenced by your own remarks, Defense. They could really? easily claim to agree with your statements in uh. order to support your story. And that would get us nowhere. That may be true, but I'd still like to hear what they have to say regardless. If we're, they will. We're using our right to remain silent here. Wow! It, yeah. Why right there, kids? Why? If they told you, Golden Pixie, would that not defeat the entire purpose of the right? <sighs> You're right. Fine then. Of course, I've been in the second assumption. Of... Your care. initial rebuttal was based on the fact that Royal Order left his house at the specified time of 9:30. However, Jury this information sex. came from Miss Devotion, whose testimony is questionable. Can we really trust the time she gave for when her husband left home? Uh. And finally, there's one last problem with your rebuttal. There's still more. Even if we grant that those assumptions are true, your arguments utilize several different measurements of time in order to make your points stand. These measurements are but estimates based on a pony's gait. Depending on the difference in size, walking speed, and other varying factors, there's always going to be a slight difference in how quickly or slowly one can travel from point Why A can't to these point be B. A lot simpler? Don't so, you have like memory Even though it may seem as though Royal Order would have teleported into the crossroads right well, before the, the defendant's magic eyes, other people it's still entirely get possible that, way. that he could have done so before the two ever reached the area. So weird. what's your <laughs> next move going to be, Defense? I'll grant that you managed to cast doubt on Royal Order acting as the blackmail recipient, but it still hasn't been proven to be false just yet. As long as we have no reason to doubt that Miss Devotion was the one behind the blackmail, it'll be difficult to refute this point. And it's kind of weird that her, her own mom the blackmail, call her turning kids said it himself. The ponies he and Scootaloo met at the castle were Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon! And yet, 
No evidence has been submitted which would suggest that either Diamond Tiara or Silver Spoon were even at the scene of the crime. True. We only have the defendant's yeah, words, the which cannot be fully trusted. Well, I... Uh, That's why I said go back to the Diamond place and the best the ones who made the blackmail the letter. Part. They have to be the ones who were there that night. But how am I supposed to prove that? If I can't even use Scootaloo and turning his own words. If I'm right about Luna, the evidence to prove it must exist. But I've never even seen these kids before. How am I supposed to be able to- Objection! Alright. Twilight? Twilight finally gets You're the right, talk. Prosecutor Luna. Looking through the evidence, there's nothing that can yet prove our claim. Which is why the defense is prepared to submit new evidence. Okay. Y you are? We are, Athena. <laughs> Twilight. Well, then by all evidence. means, please present this evidence to us, Miss Sparkle. Gladly, Your Honor. Hmm? All those pieces of glass? Oh, glass, uh, a sense, uh, glass Honor, eyepiece. But not quite. These glass fragments are found at the scene of the crime. However, only so the investigation concluded that they were actually a broken glasses. pair of near-sighted glasses. glasses. I'm near-sighted as well. Exactly. <laughs> now, if you run through the profiles of every single pony involved in this case so far, you'll notice that they all share a distinct characteristic. Not a single one of them wears glasses. What? Prosecutor Luna, is this true? It is, Your Honor. That would, of course, make these shards of glass seem irrelevant to the case. However, if we take into account Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, then the story changes. For you see, one of them does wear glasses on a regular yep, basis. Silver Spoon. Silver Spoon. Wh what? It's still kind of sad for a horse that poor eyesight. Now, horse that poor eyesight privileged. Objection! Uh, Many not a good horse. wear glasses, Miss Sparkle. So I'm afraid that alone isn't enough to substantiate your claim. Do you have any proof that those shards of glass are from Miss Spoon's glasses specifically? Unfortunately, I... Yeah, you without the frame. But it shouldn't be hard to figure out what the prescribed measurements of her glasses are. All we need to do is hear from her optometrist, and then we... OBJECTION! You wish to invade a child's privacy on nothing but an educated guess? You have no proof that these glasses were even broken on the night of the murder. For all you know, they could have been broken the day before. Or the day before that. Yeah, true. If you want us to collect a statement from the doctor, you'll first need to show yeah, us that those horse. shards are, beyond reasonable doubt, related to the crime in question. Very well. I'll do just that. Athena? So much for no more getting bailed out. Twilight's doing all the work for us. If I hadn't jumped the gun with accusing Zakora, Athena. This is why Twilight yeah? should have been doing this the whole time. We're going to have to make a gamble here. What do you mean? Apart from hearing from Turning and Scootaloo, there's only one way we can prove when those glasses were broken. Seeing how Luna won't accept either of their words, our only hope is that she can recall in enough detail what she saw that day. She... You mean... Yes, but before I do this, I just want to make sure you're okay with it. Well, At this what's going point, on? you seem to know far better than me how to handle this. Uh, go ahead. Defense! Present your evidence to the court now! What can prove the connection these glass shards have with this case? Your Honor, if you recall, we heard testimony from Zakura earlier. She spoke about what she was doing that day before the crime occurred. One of those activities was looking for rare flowers, right around the scene of the crime. Yes, for along that castle's cliffside, sometimes rare flowers peek and hide. Sadly, when my search was done, I left without finding a single one. Maybe it's all big. Yes, I do remember that. Better memory. What significance does that have here? If Sakura had gone to the scene earlier that day, then she might be able to confirm for us whether or not the shards in question were present at the time. 
Oh, that's right. So, Zakora, can you confirm for us? The glass shards in the picture here. Were they there when you went to the scene that day? How funny you bring this up to me. It just came rushing back, you see. That night at the scene, those shards I did spy. The glint of the moonlight caught my eye. And as for their presence earlier that day, I think you'll like what I have to say. Because as far as I can recall... Well, we're waiting. <laughs> there were no glass shards there at all. Thank you, Zakora. You've been a great help. So there you have it, Prosecutor Luna. The glasses were undoubtedly broken on the day in question, at some point prior to Zakora coming across the body. And I'm confident that once you get these shards examined, you'll find that they match up with the glasses Silver Spoon is prescribed to wear. That, in combination with the defendant's testimony, will leave very little room for glasses. doubt, I'd say. <laughs> It'll prove conclusively DJ that Pop both Brady. Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara were at the scene over. that very night. I concur with Princess Twilight. Prosecutor Luna, what are your thoughts? The prosecution concedes that the glasses prove exactly what the defense claims. <laughs> you do? There is, however, one final question I must ask. Oh no. <laughs> And what would that be? Does your stance in regards to why these two would have been in the forest that night remain unchanged? The evidence speaks for itself. The one who orchestrated this blackmail was Fair Devotion. It's possible you may have proven that Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon were at the scene, but do you still claim that they were the blackmailers, even in the face Look, of evidence? They probably grabbed the, the yes, newspaper through it in the that's house. That's a very good they question. Accuse someone else. Defense, do you have an answer? What do you think, Athena? What? <laughs> Me? Twilight, I'm not even sure I should say anything at this point. I've already messed up once before, making claims that I couldn't back up. True. Oh, it's totally no more this than is her. different from then. We have a footing now, one backed up by our own evidence. Regardless of how this trial has gone so far for us, I think we're finally getting somewhere. I think this is our chance to make up for our mistakes. <laughs> you mean my mistakes? Yeah. <laughs> but Twilight... Athena! I know you feel like you messed up, but that doesn't matter right now. I took a huge gamble with objecting earlier, but I did that because I trusted you could back me up if I needed you to. Yes, well, you accused Sakura, right but we pony. can't Almost let that like us. So it's We've got shimmer, one chance to bring those fillies to the I stand. That's not... <laughs> we have to take it. Twilight, even after what I did, you still believe in me? Twilight just paved the way for us to make our comeback. Even if the evidence is the stacked against us, have we have to take a chance all. here. Together. Miss Sykes, Princess Twilight. Yes. Do you, or do you not, still assert that Miss Tiara and Miss Spoon were the ones behind the blackmailing? Obviously they are. Ready, Athena? I hope Stop so. The, the Golden right? Pixie is back from her sulking journey, I see. Let us hear this final answer, then. The defense? <clears throat> The defense still believes that Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon were the ones who blackmailed the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Objection! And how do you expect that claim to hold, Golden Pixie? The evidence has clearly established that Fair Devotion is the only one who could have been the blackmailer. The magazines found in her home are conclusive to this fact. <laughs> exactly where did that you find is it? true. However, what if that very fact is nothing short of the true author's trap? You're claiming that us finding the magazines in Miss Devotion's household was something that the true blackmailer set up? And where's your evidence? There is no evidence. Unless you have the, the glass shards. They prove that Silver Spoon and presumably Diamond Tiara were both at the scene where the blackmail was supposed to occur. That can't be a coincidence. If the magazines say they can't be the blackmailers, 
then perhaps that evidence should be called into question. Exactly. The glass shards found at the scene corroborate the defendant's testimony. So if anything's suspect here, it's those magazines. It's quite possible they could have been placed in the victim's home in an attempt to mislead the investigation. Yet, you have no definitive proof of your claim. Just speculation and guesswork. I'm not used to reacting to only a very long video. The defense wishes to call Donna, Tiara, and Silver Spoon to the stand. Oh, like they're gonna they be there. honest. It's impossible to hide that now. What matters at this point is what they saw. They're gonna Were they lie. the blackmailers? Or was they're it someone friends. else? The only way we can find out for sure is by hearing what they have to say. They're gonna lie. They're little liars. Allow me to give my thoughts on the matter. The prosecution has given us a very convincing case with only the slightest room for doubt. However, given the potential that there were additional witnesses to the crime that we have yet to hear from, I do not feel it is right for me to give a verdict at this time. Prosecutor Luna, what say you? I wholeheartedly agree, Your Honor. The defense has pointed out an interesting conundrum. By all accounts, it should be impossible for Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon to be the perpetrators of this blackmail. However, it was their effects that were found at the blackmail site, which would lead one to believe that they were involved. This contradiction cannot go unresolved. Therefore, the prosecution concedes to the defense's request. Very well. This court will now enter a 30-minute recess. During that time, I expect the prosecution to sweet. obtain the results <laughs> on those glass shards and find out if they match the prescription of the Philly Silver Spoon. If by chance they do, the court demands that she and Diamond Tiara are summoned here immediately to give testimony. That last bit will be entirely unnecessary, Your Honor. After all, the two of them are already sitting in the witness lobby, waiting to be summoned to the stand. Very well. Okay, do you have this Court entire thing adjourned. figured out already? I'm assuming that might be it. Let's see. Yep. Oh, that was my reaction. Dude. Case 2, episode 3. We'll do it number 4 next. I'm pretty sure it's going to be super long to tell, too. These things are like 2 hours long, so. Yeah, boom. This should be fine. So, guys, like, the reaction is actually finally getting pretty good as the trial stuff. I have my theories, and. Like I said, I would have added clips to these, but good lord, these are too long. And plus my video recorder can't really handle too much clips when their videos are this long. So. Well, but yeah, besides that, have a nice day.